Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on creating static and dynamic named ranges using Microsoft Excel. Taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in this worksheet, named data, I have four variables, substance use, depression, motivation, and one variable that does not have a label, although it contains the same values as this motivation variable. So let's assume that this data set is incomplete and that we will be adding values to each of these variables. And we want to create a range for some of the variables that remain static. So no matter what we add to the variable, the name range will always stay the same. It'll have the same cells contained in the range. But in other instances, for other variables, we want the range to be dynamic. As we add values to the variable, we want the range to change size accordingly so that it always contains all the values in the variable. So let's first start with a static range. And for this example, I'm going to use the depression variable. So I'm going to select B1 all the way through B21. So the label and all the values in the variable. So I'm going to move up top to the formulas ribbon. And under that, define names. I'm going to go to the name manager and from here I could click new and that would put me in a dialog where I can create a static name range or I could just go to the define name section of formulas and select define name to save one step. So you can see that the name is set to depression by default. If I were to cancel out of this and select this unnamed variable and do the same thing you can see there's no name. It's just blank by default. So I'm going to cancel out of this and go back to the depression variable, select all those values, select define name, and from this point to create a new static variable named depression, I would just click OK. But I'm going to shorten this name. I'm going to shorten this to just DEP and then click OK. And now I can use that static name range instead of the coordinates. So to give you an example, I'll use the sample standard deviation formula. And usually in a situation like this, looking for the sample standard deviation, I would just select the values in this variable. So I just select B2 through B21 and then hit enter. And we can see the standard deviation is 7.48. Now if I selected the label name, which is in cell B1, it's not going to change the result. For this particular formula, either way will return the same result. So now I can just substitute in the new static name range I created, standard deviation, sample standard deviation, and then DEP, that new variable, and I get the same value. So creating and using a static name range fairly straightforward. What about a situation where we have a variable that we're going to add values to and we want the range to change size? That's referred to as a dynamic name range and it's based off of the offset function. So before I create a dynamic name range, I'm going to insert the offset function into this cell so that the arguments are visible. So we can see there are five arguments here. Reference, rows, columns, and then optional would be height and width. This is important to keep in mind as we move into the name manager and create the dynamic name range. So first let's work with the motivation variable, the one that's labeled, this one in red. And then we'll take a look at the one without a label in orange. Let's assume for this new dynamic name range that I want the name of the range to be motivation. So I'm going to select motivation. I can also select the values, but I don't need to because I'm going to change that default static reference to a dynamic reference. So from here, I'm going to go to the define names section of the formulas ribbon, select define name, and you can see it has populated the name motivation for me, and it has included the values that I selected. In this refers to text box, 
this is where I'm going to make the edit and insert the offset function to make this a dynamic name range. So I already have this copied, so I'm just going to paste in the function and I'll review the structure of it up here where I have it displayed in one of the cells. So I'll click OK to create the, the dynamic name range. And I'm going to move up here to cell I2 where I have that function. In order to get this function to appear like this in the cell, I used an apostrophe before the equal sign. So keeping in mind what we know about the offset function in terms of the arguments that it uses, we can see here this is offset and then data exclamation mark and an absolute reference to C2, which is here to the left, the first value of the motivation variable. The dollar signs before the column and the row are what make that reference absolute. Then we have a comma, so that would be the reference of the offset function. And next, the next argument is the row. For the row, it's just a zero, another comma, moving to the column, again another zero, another comma, and then we're going to insert another function, the count a function. And this is for the height argument of the offset function. So this will be count a, and then data exclamation point, dollar sign c, colon, dollar sign c. So an absolute reference to the entire c column. Then we'll subtract one from that function, a comma, which moves us to the width of the offset function, evaluate one there, and then close out the function. So again, with using the standard deviation as the example, I'm going to look for the sample standard deviation for motivation by selecting the label and all the values in this case. We can see it's 5.19. And now to create an example using the dynamic name range, I'm going to move down and insert the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation function. And in this case, I just need to use the named range motivation. You see as I type in M and then O, motivation comes up here. And even when I just had the M and not the O, if I scroll down, we can see motivation is there. So I can just double click that and hit enter and I have the sample standard deviation for that variable. So let's say I go down here to cell C18 and I add a value to this variable, let's say 45. Notice that the dynamic name range has included this value so the function that used the dynamic name range changed to 5.4. The static reference remains at 5.19, the function that just used the coordinates. Below the offset function used in creating this particular dynamic name range, you can see I have another offset function, and this one is for this unnamed variable. The variable does not have a label. And notice there are a few differences. This is using, of course, column D instead of column C, but also it's starting the reference argument is starting at D1 instead of C2. And after the count A function, we do not subtract 1. So it starts at the top at row 1, and we don't subtract 1 after the count A function. I hope you found this video on creating static and dynamic name ranges in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.